Good evening, good evening, good evening to each and every one of you. Thank God for another day. We thank God for another opportunity to be able to gather together on the line to uh, discuss the word of God. We just thank God for this opportunity. And we don't take it lightly because we realize that it could have been the other way. I thank each of you that are tuning in uh, tonight, each one, each of you that will be tuning in uh, later uh, to uh, view this video. We thank God for it. Only a couple of announcements uh, tonight. I just want to say that um, we uh, ask you to keep in prayer a uh, good friend and um, brother of ours. Um, his name is Deacon Henry Cook. He had a procedure done, but he is home resting. Uh, he is a deacon at the Corinth Baptist Church in Trustful. So we ask that you pray for him. Not only that, uh, we mentioned, I believe, on last week uh, about, you know, others that had death in their family. So let's continue to pray for them, especially the Riley Jones family, the, uh, along with the, uh, and the Felder family and the Webb family. Let's keep them lifted up. Uh, we never know when it may be our day to be asking for prayer uh, because we have lost a loved one. So let us keep them in prayer. I don't have any more announcements, so we will pray and get straight to the word. Oh, gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for another day. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord God. We just give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory, Lord, because we realize it is not because of anything that we have done that you have allowed us this opportunity, but it's all because of your grace and your mercy, Father, and we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the depths of our hearts. Lord God, we can, uh, ask now, Lord God, those that are listening, uh, uh, that may be viewing right now, those that may be, view later, Father, we lift them up to you right now. Whatever issues that may be going on in their lives, whatever situations, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that we all need you in one way or another. So, Father, we just thank you right now. Thank you that all is well, Lord God, and we just thank you that even when we go through our trials, we still know, Lord God, that you've got your eyes on us and that we are in your hands and that everything will turn out all right. We love you, Lord, and we bless your holy name. We thank you again, Lord God, for so, so, so many blessings, Lord. We lift up our pastor tonight, Lord God. We call him blessed man of God. We ask that you will continue to crown his head with even more wisdom and knowledge of your word, Lord God, so that he will be able to break the bread of life to us. Not only our pastor, but pastors all over this city, all over this state, all over this country, all over this nation, Lord God. Those that you have called to minister to us, Lord God, we just pray right now that you will allow them time, Lord God, that they will be able to study, Lord God, and then, then where well, they'll be able to break the bread of life to us. We thank you, Lord. We invoke your presence tonight, Lord God, as we continue our study in the book of Ephesians. Father, we just thank you for those that are coming on, Lord God, and those that may look at it later. Father, we just thank you right now. We pray, Lord God, that something will be said that will uplift a bow down head, Lord God, or, or give someone, Lord God, a more understanding, Father. We thank you right now. We uh, ask you, uh, Lord God, to forgive us of our sins because we know that this, this day alone that we have sinned in thought, word, or deed. So now we ask that you would forgive us, Lord. We thank you because you said if we confess our sins that you are faithful and just to not only forgive us, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, we thank you right now for our cleansing. We love you, Lord. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory. It's all in the mighty, the magnificent and the holy name of Jesus Christ. We do pray this prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. As I stated before and in so many times that uh, we just thank God again for this opportunity because 
so many people wish that they had the opportunity that we have right now. I understand sometimes we may we get up out of the bed, uh, we are stiff and we may not can move. We have to wait for a few minutes to get all uh, these legs and these arms to moving, but we are moving. Somebody still would trade places with us. So instead of complaining, let's try to remember to just say thank you. Thank God for things being as well as they are. With that being said, uh, we're going to go back, uh, get to our lesson now. You know, on last week, um, we were looking in, um, we were in, we started in our fourth chapter uh, last week, the fourth chapter of Ephesians. And we know uh, last uh, week, Paul uh, was talking to um, the Ephesians, but also uh, every believer that would come and read this. Uh, he's uh, talking to us as well. He was uh, telling them, um, he compared uh, the Christian life to a walk. And he was saying that uh, we, uh, since now that Christ has uh, um, has taken us and placed us into the body of Christ, we are no longer, it's not just Jews and Gentiles. Like, you know, there is no separation now. We are one in the body of Christ. And he and Christ did it because he died on the old rugged cross for us. He shed his blood. And so this is what Paul is saying. Uh, because of what he has already done for us, then you ought to, he was begging and pleading with them to walk worthy. Uh, he, he was asking them, you know, he wanted them to walk worthy of their calling. Uh, because, you know, Paul let us know that we all have a calling. We have all been called for a purpose. And he wants us to walk in that calling. And then when he was telling them to walk worthy of the calling, which you have been called, he went on to define the walk, as I stated. And he was talking about this. He uh, was um, fashioning this Christian life as to a walk. And so uh, when he begging them and pleading with them uh, to walk worthy, and so it's not only when you ask a person, uh, you know, telling a person to do something, uh, but, you know, you got to make it plain to them uh, what it is and how you want them to do it. And so that is exactly what Paul did. Uh, he uh, told them he went on after he told them that he wanted, uh, he was begging them to walk worthy of their calling. Uh, he uh, went on to define this walk. In terms of attitude, there's a certain attitude that we have to have and actions that we have to have when we are walking this uh, Christian walk. And so in terms of these attitudes and actions, Paul listed uh, four virtues uh, last week that we saw that should uh, that these virtues uh, should characterize every believer in Christ. And, you know, he talked about uh, he, he talked about us being humble. In other words, humility. Each of us ought to have humility. He talked about gentleness. Uh, in other words, that's another word for meekness. Uh, we ought to be gentle and not not weak. You know, as I said last week, a lot of time when we talk about meekness, a lot of people take meekness for weakness. But no, that means that uh, we've got strength under control. And so he talked about patience, told us about patience last week. And then he told us about love. All of this, uh, uh, then he told uh, us uh, last week that we ought to make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. And, and so uh, we saw last week, we started with this last week where uh, Paul said that we were all uh, in one, all in one. We're no longer uh, separate. We are all in one. And he told us that there were seven ones 
that we uh, looked at last week. And he told us that there's one body and that body is the body of Christ. So we are all one body. I don't care. You know, now we have different denominations, but I don't care what denomination denomination that you are. If you are a denomination that um, acknowledges the deity of Christ, then we are all one in his body. Uh, we may be the Church of God in Christ, the Church of God, a Baptist, uh, Methodist, uh, Pentecostal, but we are all one in Christ. He said there's one body. Then he said one spirit. And that one spirit that he's talking about is the Holy Spirit. There are many spirits, but there is only one Holy Spirit. And each believer... At, uh, when we get, uh, uh, confess Christ, then we should have that same power of the Holy Spirit that uh, he's telling uh, that Paul was telling us about. Then he told us about the one hope, and we all should have that one hope, one hope of one day seeing Jesus. You know, that's what we are living for. We want to see Christ one day. In all his glory, we want to see him. We want to see the place that he said he was going away to prepare for us. That is our hope. So we're all, that's that one hope, not two or three hopes, one hope. Then we've got one Lord. That one Lord is Jesus Christ, who is our master. And then we've got one faith. Uh, that one faith is uh, that we've got to have faith in what Jesus did when he uh, died on the cross and uh, he was buried in the third day morning, he got up. And that is what our faith is, is hinging on, on what Christ did. Then it said um, one baptism. And I know that there are uh, several other baptisms, but this baptism here uh, uh, talking about um, not only were uh, the main thing is talking about when we first when a, a believer, when you confess Christ, when you say that, you know, you believe in Christ. And at the moment that you believe, the, uh, uh, then you are what you are baptized. In other words, you are placed into the body of Christ. That is a baptism. But we also follow up with water baptism, whereas we are emerged, and that's what uh, baptized means is to what emerge. And, and I know as Baptists, we believe in, in complete uh, uh, submerging, un, you know, underwater, not just sprinkling, but we believe in going under the, uh, the water. We believe in um, water baptism. And so he told us that there is one baptism because we only were baptized into the body of Christ because we know that a water baptism does not save us. As I think I said last week, we can go into the water. Uh, if we have not truly believed and had a change on the inside, when we say that we confess Christ and we've had that change, then we are what we are, are baptized into that body. And then we go and be baptized into the water. But if we really have not have a change on the inside, as our pastors say all the time, we go into the water, a sin, a, 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 a dry sin, go into the water as a dry sinner, but we just come up a wet sinner. Nothing has changed. The change has to take place on the inside of us. So we can't get that twisted. I so know uh, so many times, you know, people say, well, I want to be baptized again. It does not matter about you being baptized again, because that is not what gets it. We've got to make sure that uh, the, our inside, our spirit man is what has changed. Amen. And then he told us about the one God. Uh, and so that was our one's uh, the oneness of, of the believers in Christ. We got to believe in all those, all those different oneness that he told us about. Well, we're going to go on this week. In this section, uh, Paul is focusing on the great spiritual realities that unite all Christians. And uh, it sort of provides us as a, a, a checklist of unifying uh, 
factors that bind all of, of us as believers together. And so the central uh, item in this list is the oneness of God. We're still talking about the oneness of God and the ultimate basis for all of this uh, unity. And it, uh, so we're going to see, uh, we're starting at uh, verse, se uh, verse 7. Uh, verses 7 through 10, we're going to see that each member of the body has been given a gift. Let me read 7 through 10. And it says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity cap captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might uh, feel all things. So here when we're talking about, he start out by saying that, um, Every one of us uh, has been given a gift, and it's what what by the grace of God. And so, uh, you know, there are diversity of gifts. These these here are, are the gifts. I know Paul talks about uh, spiritual gifts over in um I think that's uh, I believe it's the uh, twelfth chapter of Romans. Also over in First Corinthians. I uh, can't remember exactly what, I'm not sure if that's the fourth or chapter. But anyway, over in 1 Corinthians, he talked about uh, uh, spiritual gifts and, you know, the different gifts and, uh, that we have. Uh, here, uh, Paul is talking about um, the gifts in the church for the edifying of the body. In other words, to build up the body. And we're going to see what those uh, gifts are that he has given uh to and uh you know to certain you know it could be gifts but uh it's more like these are uh, functions uh that uh he is uh, uh that Paul is talking about here in um uh in this uh particular because he went up uh, uh but but before we get to those different functions or gifts that we're going to talk about in the church he said that um that he had given grace and it was on it's not because of anything that we deserved uh if you're a pastor or an apostle or whatever uh, you know type of gift that uh you uh possess it had nothing to do with you uh it uh, all it was because of god has given us grace uh, because of god's grace that he has given it to us but he has given each man according to his ability because God knows what each one of us can handle. And uh, just because, you know, some of us, because, you know, uh, uh, just say, for instance, I'm an I and you might be, uh, 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 you might be a leg. Uh, so I'm saying that, oh, I don't, I don't want to be an I. I want to be a leg because I want to walk. And then the one that has the leg is saying, I don't want to be a leg because I get tired of walking. I want to be an eye because I want to see. But God knew exactly what we needed. And so he has given to each of us uh, 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 the gift according to our ability or that which he knew that we could handle. Uh, before that, though, he said when he, uh, these, the, the gifts were given, it said, wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high and led captivity cavity, captive and gave gifts unto men. And I know there are, uh, there is some controversy uh, about uh, this, but it has been said, and I really do believe, because uh, even uh, in the New Testament, even Peter talked about he went to prison and he preached uh, uh, to the uh, pris those that were in prison there. But I just believe when it said that he, uh, uh, what it said, uh, okay, but wherefore the, well, he ascended up on high. In other words, when he when Christ died, he was buried. 
Uh, okay, so he was buried. And then when he rose, that means he ascended. But also it said that he ascended up on high uh, and th then he led captivity cap captive and he gave gifts. Now that he that ascended, what is but that he also descended first. In other words, he went down first because when Christ was down in the grave, it, it uh, said that he went down. And there, you know, he had to lead the captivity, cap those that was in in captive down in the uh, in the grave. Because I think I may have said this last week, uh, when the old saints uh, died, those that believed they were going, uh, they are really just they believed, they believed in God. But uh, uh, you know, Christ had not shed His blood. And they were always using a a, a ram or a, a you know something where they were killing that animal and they were uh, making atonements for uh, atonements were being made for their sin. But in the Old Testament, uh, the the sins were just covered. It was that's why they every year they had to make you know the high priest had to come in and do another atonement. Uh, for the people's sin, you know, he had to get this spotless uh, 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 lamb and bring that lamb. And then he put all the people's sin on it. And then he would let it out into the uh, into the wilderness. And but the high priest had to do that every year. But when Christ shed his blood. That once and for all is no more shedding of the blood because he's all he did. it, And he went to the mercy seat of, of, of God and he placed his blood on that mercy seat. He paid for our sins. And so in other words, they are just not covered. Uh, our sins have been what? They have been done away with. He wiped the slate clean once we accepted him. Our slate was no longer. We we uh, he, he wiped it clean. So when he went down, those saints that died of old because their sins were only covered they had to have their sins what forgiven and so uh, uh what uh christ did when he went down in the grave and because i think it was in the i think i can't remember is it the 14th or the 16th chapter of luke where uh it talks about uh christ was talking about um uh abraham not abraham but the rich man and lazarus uh, when the rich man died and then Lazarus died. Remember that um, story that it tells about when the rich man died and, um, and Lazarus died? And see, when the rich man died, he went to hell. Uh, but when Lazarus died, he went into, he was in the bosom of Abraham. And see, the uh, hell uh, in the Old Testament was divided into two sections. There was one section Whereas there was a uh, being uh, there, uh, people that go there were being tormented, but the others were what they would call the bosom of Abraham. In other words, they were waiting on Christ to come and deliver them. So at the time when they were uh, uh, in the bosom of Abraham, they were just living in comfort, and so those that was over on the other side, you know, when they saw them living in comfort. They would get upset and mad, but hey, look, it's all, in, all according to the life that they lived before they uh, before they died. So when Christ died and he went down into hell, he went down so that what? He could uh, bring those up and bring them back with him when he go uh, up to the Father because what? They simply believed but they did not have the blood that could do away with their sins. Their sins were only covered. So when he went down and he, uh, uh, Peter said that he preached to the prisoners and I just believe in my heart that, okay, so now he preached to them. You had this opportunity now that what well, now you can accept Christ. You know, you could not do it. Then you, 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 uh, were saved because of what? Because of your faith, because you but simply believed. You believed God's word at that particular time. And so, uh, when he released them, 
and brought them up out of, 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 of captivity where they said that they were captive because they were down in hell, but they were not in the section uh, whereas there was uh, uh, being those that were being uh, tormented. They were not there. They were in the bosom of Abraham. Remember when um, the rich man uh, had told uh, Abraham to, to just let somebody go, you know, you know, just go back and tell. Uh, uh, no, that was not. Uh, he wanted him to dip his finger uh, in, in some cooling water, you know, just <laughs> because he was it was just that hot. And even he wanted him to uh, send somebody back. Because he did not want his uh, friends or his family to come where he was. But Abraham said, you know, they're going to have the same opportunity. You had the same opportunity. You didn't have to end up where you are. It was because you did not listen. You did not believe. You had the opportunity. So no, nobody can go back to preach to them. They've got the uh, the uh, preachers. They've got, uh, 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 the, you know, those that... Uh, uh, you know, you got the apostles and uh, you got all of those that will be preaching to them. So they will hear the word. It's going to be left up to them to hear the word and to heed the word to keep from coming where you are. And so that is what it means on when he was talking about he that descended the same also that ascended up above all heavens that he might feel all things. In other words, he fulfilled all uh, the uh, things that he was supposed to fulfill while he was here on earth. And he died and he went down and he rescued those that was there. And then he had to take them on to glory. Remember in the book of Matthew, where it talked about when, on the, um, uh, when Christ was crucified, it said that those graves uh, opened up and those people were walking the street. And so I just believe that, you know, they got up and they were walking with him because they done heard it. Now they heard the gospel. So they done got up and they walking on. And hey, look, they were uh fit. So that lets me know too, Vic, because we know that Christ, the, Christ, the, uh, the disciples recognized Christ when he came back from the dead. So if the, all those people up walking, they were recognizable. And even though they were dead, that me, lets me know that we do, we will have a body that is recognizable uh, once, you know, when we get our glorified uh, body. Amen. And then so now um, he said that, uh, okay, that was he that descended the same that might, that he might fulfill all things. He fulfilled all things when he rose from the dead and uh, he led those captives uh, free. He led them, uh, those that had believed in him. So now let's go on and see about uh, each member of the body that had been given a gift. And let's see what these uh, gifts are. He said uh, in verse uh, 12, for the prophet, uh, and he gave, let's start at verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for what? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children uh, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. My God, my God, my God. Okay, we see um, also back and back up. We see the impact that Christ had, uh, that his death had. Uh, his incarnation, his as his death, his resurrection, as in his ascending, we see what uh, all the impact that it had on the body of Christ. So we see here uh, that the spiritual gifts that have been given to the church, Paul named these gifts that, uh, uh, and I think more so, I say rather than gifts, I believe that uh, Paul was talking about uh, more so uh, the function of those. Uh, 
in the body of Christ. And we're going to see what they are to be doing. Uh, because we know in general the uh, the uh, the gift that God has given to the body of Christ is the Holy Spirit. And so, but the Spirit himself uh, is said to give a variety of gifts. And Paul talked about those gifts that the Spirit gives over in Romans in the 12th chapter. And then again, he talks about it in 1 Corinthians. Uh, so anyway, he said that, um, that he had given us uh, apostles. He has given apostles. He has given us prophets. He has given us evangelists, uh, pastors, and teachers. And I know some, you know, we talk about the fivefold ministry, and that's where they get this from is here. But I've heard some people say that this is only for uh, 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 functions or for offices. But I kind of beg to differ on this because I just believe, I know it says pastors and teachers. And when you look in the, uh, in the Bible, it, it does have, a a a, 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 a comma or either semicolon, uh, and it said, and some pastors and, uh, teachers. But, uh, when you said and teachers, I still believe that, um, uh, I believe that pastors are they should be teachers as well, but I believe too that we do have people that have uh, the gift of teaching, but they are not pastors. They are not prophets. Uh, they are not uh, evangelists. They are just teachers. So I believe that this really was included in this when um. Paul mentioned these functions, and we know that these functions were what? Uh, these functions were to what? To build up the church. And see, that's what uh, our preaching is all about, and teaching is all about. It's to build up those that are in the body of Christ. And so many times, you know, uh, we are uh, some, you know, some messages that uh, we hear uh, at church because. You know, evangelizing is done outside of the church because those really that are basically that are coming, they are saved. We do have some that are coming that, you know, that will hear the word and they will be saved. But basically, uh, when the pastor is preaching, he is preaching to a body of believers. And so what? You've got to preach to them and to what? To build them up uh and we're gonna see that they are uh, they are uh, need to be built up you know uh because we know that some people just attend church for personal benefit but that's not uh that's i would think you know it's more like being a leech because god saved us and he has equipped us to do the work of ministry in other words the work of service you know so why why are we doing the work of service? Because we are to build up the body of Christ. And what the, the church will only grow and mature when all of the parts operate what in harmony. We need to know how we are to uh, 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 live this Christian life, how, you know, how, what we are to do, how we are to do it. How are we to live in harmony and in unity? We need to be taught how to do it because we don't just know how to do it all of a sudden. And so if you have somebody in, in there that has a, a, a long range of personality, uh, then, then that, uh, uh, you know, that saint, uh, is going to be feeble, and then the body will suffer because what? Uh, it, it you know you don't have the togetherness uh, because our relationship uh, to uh, in the corporate body is uh, is crucial. We should all be on one accord, and this is what Paul was telling them. It is crucial for the body of Christ to what to be as one. And then he went on in verses 13 and 14. He was telling us that, you know, we all got to come together. Uh, and that's how we are building up the body of Christ. Uh, because he said that um, 
uh, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And so, you know, we've got to build because we need to grow. You know, we no longer are babes, you know, or, you know, we didn't stay babies. We grew up. And our, you know, children, we look at our children, how they are growing. Because what? We no longer need to be babes in Christ because what? Children are unstable in their thinking. They're easily what? Tossed to and fro. That's what Paul was talking about. See, as Christians, we are, um, you know, we can't stay the same that we are. We need to grow up so that we can have a spiritual, uh, a, a, a sound, a spiritual foundation. And once we get that sound spiritual foundation, what we need to do is to go on and then to try to, you know, we equip somebody else because somebody has helped us and given us what we need uh, to grow. Then what we need to, what we have learned, then we got to go. And, you know, it's like I said, each one teach one or each one reach one. Once I have been taught, then it's on me to go and to teach somewhere one else. In other words, uh, the only way that we're going to grow and be strong so that we won't be blown around by every uh, wind of teaching uh, because we do have some false teaching. Uh, it talked about uh, human cunning. Uh, uh, so we need to be stabilized or we need to be mature. Uh, and see, that only uh, comes when we are connected to each other, when we are one and we are doing what we need to do to what to build up the body of Christ. And so uh, we see that that's why, you know, he said, no, be no more children, because I told you, you know, children uh, don't think the way that an adult would think because, you know, they're thinking, you know, they'll think one way this minute. They, they you know, their thinking is just like being tossed uh, to and fro. They're unstable in their thinking. They may think one way this minute and the next minute they're going to think the other way. And see, we can't be like that. We've got to be stable. We got to be stable in what we believe because if we're not stable in what we believe, then anyone can come in and bring in, uh, some kind of new religion and we'll fall for that. We've had so many people that will fall, you know, look at those people when Jim Jones came along and how they followed him and how he ended up and all of them dying because he had them to drink poison. And so we don't want to be led astray with things like that. Somebody's always coming with something new. And sometimes, you know, if we are not rooted and grounded in what we believe, then we will be easily led astray. But we have got to believe in, uh, the, uh, in what God has given us, his word, uh, to believe. Then let's go on. He said, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. See, the truth is what matters. You know, truth is what God says, uh, what God says about a matter. Uh, we know that God's word is true and it shouldn't be used like a, 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 a destructive hammer. You know, uh, it, it uh, should be what spoken with love, even when we have to chastise one another. Uh, and that word is truth that we're going to use the word. We should not use a, the word, like I say, as a hammer to beat someone across the head with it. Paul is telling us that when we have to chastise somebody with the truth of God's word, we are to do it in what? We are to do it in love. In other words, we got to learn how to be compassionate with one another and uh and be responsible in uh and seeking the well being of each other. So many times you want to say, Well, I got mine, you just let them get there. No, we ought to be concerned about our our brothers and our sisters. And then he went on in verse sixteen, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love 
In other words, it's kind of like uh, uh, in California, you have, I've got some uh, some redwood trees that grow, and they grow to be a uh, real massive size, and they are real old. Uh, but the secret to their stability and their uh, longevity is that their roots intertwine. And see, uh, uh, they intertwine underground, and underground they are all interconnected. So you can't mess, mess with one uh, uh, without uh, messing up the whole grove of trees. And so that's the way it should be uh, with us. You know, uh, sometimes when fierce wind blow, their connectedness allowed them to borrow one from another to stand strong. And so it is what Paul is saying with the body of Christ, which is the church. That's the way that we ought to be in the church. We ought to be what? A, a, a body that is strong, connecting with one another. Uh, uh, and, and, and when we are connected like that, when one falls, you know what? We ought to be able to pick that one up. And because we are strong, but you know, every, you know, not everyone for himself, but we are all in one body. And this is what uh, Paul wants us to see, that we are all one. Uh, every, and, you know, not every man trying to uh, do his own, do his own thing. And, and so, in other words, this uh, outline here was talking about we no longer walk like the rest of the Gentiles. Uh, you know, because what? Because we've had a change to come in. We see that through 17 and 19. Uh, it starts with the, uh, you know, they walk in the futility of the mind. How is it that they do this? Because it starts with the hardening of their heart. Their hearts have not, and uh, uh, which leads to ignorance that is in them. Because of such ignorance, then what? They are alienated from the life of God. And that results in having their understanding darkened. Notice where Jesus describes this same uh, process uh, they're, you know, he's talking about their walk is, 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 is past. You know, they're trying to still walk in the past when you've got a new life. Now you can't walk, you know, you can't do the same thing that you still used to do. Uh, in verse seven, then in first, uh, uh, 17, it talked uh, on this outline is talking about the old life and the new life. He said, this, I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. The Greek word, uh, here used for say in this verse is Lego. It was, uh, it has been used about 1300 times in the new Testament and it has been translated in a variety of ways. However, it's usually when you see it, it's usually talking about a, a, a discourse. And that is the way Paul is using it here. He describing the lifestyle of the unbelievers in an orderly process. In this example, Paul admonished that Christ and his doctrine do not in any way reflect this kind of conduct. Uh, to the uh, to the Ephesians and all those that will be reading this, he stated, "But you have learned nothing like that from Christ. You know, you're not like those heathens anymore. You have ha had a change." He says, "Such evil conduct is the result of what of uh, the vanity of the mind." Uh, in other words, which is, this is the absence, which is the, uh, this verse, which is the absence of any purpose. Having the understanding, he says, second, having the understanding darkened. Uh, uh, and then, uh, three, separation from God's life. And four, blindness or hardness of heart. Being past feeling, which means having no conscience. And given over to lasciviousness and uncleanness and greed. See, all of these things, it re it's referring back to the old life. Paul has stated that the only way that Christ's body would ever reach its full stature was through every individual member doing his or her part. We all have a part to play. I can't play your part. You cannot play mine. It's said that we have been given gifts 
uh, uh, according uh, through by by the grace of God that He has given it us according to each of our abilities, because He knew exactly what we could do, what we could not do, and uh, He already knew what we who we were even before we knew He who we were, and so He said that. Uh, when he was talking about the Gentile, it literally means anyone who was, uh, I mean, well, we know when we talk about Gentiles, it's anybody that was not a Jew. But before Christ's atonement, the Gentiles were without Christ. We talked about that earlier in this uh, book of Ephesians. Uh, we were alien, you know, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And we were strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope. And we were without God in the world. We saw that back in the second chapter. But we, uh, uh, we were lost. So these Ephesians had, that he was talking to then, they had been lost uh, Gentiles, but they had become saved Gentiles. And we all are that. Now, all of us at one point have been lost. Um, all of us were lost because what? We were born in sin. So as I always say all the time, you hear me say, no matter how pretty or cute that little baby is, that little baby is a sinner. And when that baby grows up to the age of accountability, that baby will have to accept Christ. In other words, that baby going to die, uh, that child going to die and go to hell. You know, that uh, uh, cute little baby going to grow up to be an adult, but that uh, adult will have to make a choice. Do you want to live with Christ forever? And he's saying now that we have that opportunity before we were not. But now we have been adopted into the family of, uh, uh, of God. We're no longer, uh, then we're no longer two. We are one. In other words, uh, looking at it for today, we should not live like, uh, in other words, now that we've been saved. That's all what Paul is saying, literally. Now that you have been saved, you should not be living like unsaved people. How many times we see people in the church, been saved for 40 and 50 years, still walking like they are unsaved. And this is what Paul is trying to get this point over, that we need to be who we are, who we say we are. If you're saved, then we need to be walking that walk, that uh, uh, not like the walk that we used to walk. Paul went on and he was explaining the root areas where unbelievers, when believers, uh, you know, where they get snared at. Uh, <clears throat> because he uh, he was saying that, you know, sometimes uh, you, you, we, we, it's things that we do. We see other people do. We try to copy what others do. But no, we got to let the Bible be our guideline, not what nobody else say. I know we can even pick up commentaries and we read those commentaries. But a lot of times we know that uh, every commentary that we read, that person was not inspired by the Holy Ghost. They just going on what they believed and how they feel about it. But when we read the word of God, this book of the, uh, the, the Bible was written by and over 40 inspired men of God. God inspired them with the Holy Spirit to write this book. So we need to sit down, even if we don't understand it, we need to pray and ask God to give us understanding of his word. And I'm a living witness that if you ask God, to show you and to give you understanding. If he doesn't give it to you right then, he will send someone in your path to explain it to you and make it even more plain to you. But also, and I know it's about time for us uh, to wrap this thing up. When uh, Paul was taught, Paul was saying that, uh, that the lost people uh, don't, you know, they weren't using their brains. And so it, that's one of the criticism against Christians by those that are, uh, you know, those of us that, uh, you know, we are saved, but then sometimes we start acting like, you know, like we are unsaved and that is foolish. We're the ones who, uh, then we'll be characterized then as being brainless because, you know, if we say we got faith, see, faith is not foolish. It's, it's a true fact. 
that uh, uh, that if we have faith, then we ought to be operating in faith. And we are uh, because we have a God that has given us everything that we need to operate in faith. He didn't ask us to do it on, on our own. He has given us the uh, word to go by. So uh, and the people who really thought things through would embrace the truth of the scripture, even if they don't do it because of a reverence of love for God. Uh, uh, you know, sin isn't smart. It's just stupid. So you can read it in the scripture and you know what it say to do. But, you know, the Bible say he who know what to do and I'll just paraphrase if you know what to do. But if you don't do it, that's a sin. Because if you know what to do, but you still fail to do it, then that is a sin. And so sin is a smart. You know, sometimes we think when we do stuff like that, we are being smart. But no, sin is not smart. Sin is stupid. Ask some of those people now that are sitting in a jail somewhere. Uh, hell, uh, certain ones, they destroyed their marriages and some even destroyed mini ministries because of what? Because of sin. And what they were thinking at the time. And then they acted on that which was not of God. And, the, and, and if you, any of these people now that have uh, ever... You know, you know, because they are suffering now because of something they did. If you talk to them and they will say, I just was not thinking. I was just not thinking. In other, wor in other words, at the passion of a moment, they lost it. And see, we can't afford to do that. We can't afford to allow the enemy to come in and take away that which we know. And so... We're going to stop right here at 652. But anyway, this is what Paul is saying to, uh, to, uh, to, to the, still uh, talking to the Ephesians and still speaking uh, to us today, talking about us walking in truth and holiness. That's where we started uh, uh, tonight. We started talking about walking in that truth. And we got to learn how to continue to walk in truth. He said we shouldn't be walking no more like the uh like the Gentiles, like the old Gentiles that we that we once were. So now we don't we've saved. Even though we're we 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 still Gentiles, but we are in the body of Christ, even with the Jews, because we are one. It showed us last week it's only one body. And then we're gonna see um where it talked about, you know, the, the past walk. We saw that tonight, that past walk that we had. If if anything is in the past, the past is the past. We can't alter the past. So why are we going to try to go back and do those same things that we did in the past when now we say we say? Because if we're going to go and do the same thing, we're going to get the what? The same result. So... If we are, uh, we know that we are saved, we got to start acting like we are saved. We can't have hardness of heart. We can't be uh, uh, ignorant uh, in the word of God when it comes to, you know, uh, doing those things of God. Because if we're going to do like Paul said, if we're going to walk worthy of our calling, we've got to know how to walk. And the only place where we can find out how to walk is in the word of God. Amen. I pray that something has been said tonight that will cause you to, to think, even, even just one little thing, it will cause you uh, to think, or even if you uh, had uh, some doubts about something that you've been doing and that now it would change your mind, give you, a, uh, uh, you know, not only a change of mind, but a change of heart. Uh, well, you will decide that I know I'm not doing that anymore. It's time that I get it together. Amen. I pray that you will have a blessed evening. And I look to see each of you Galileans uh, on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And if anyone else that is viewing this or will view this, and if you don't have a church home, we invite you to the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, 3753 Carver Avenue Southwest in the Grisilla Heights area. And until next week, I pray that God will bless you and keep you. I pray that he will make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. 
Peace in the name of Yeshua. May God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer. Go in peace.